In this video, we will explain how to configure the EtherCAT main device. We have set up a communicator EtherCAT main device to talk with two EtherCAT subdevices. In the schematic, you can see the setup and how everything is connected. The other network used in the video is Ethernet IP to assist in visualizing the setup with some values. The Ethernet IP side will be simulated using a PC-based Ethernet IP scanner simulation software. The two communicator EtherCAT subdevices are already configured and are in idle mode. This means that they are ready for a main device to open an I.O. connection to them. The first subdevice have 10 bytes of input data to the main device and 30 bytes of output data. The second subdevice have 20 bytes of input data to the main device and 20 bytes of output data. To assist visually, we send data from the other network. The first subdevice gets the values 1 through 10. The second subdevice gets the values 11 through 30. We start the configuration of the communicator EtherCAT main device by setting the IP address of the Ethernet IP adapter. Let's proceed with the EtherCAT main device configuration. In the Communication tab, we set the cycle time of the main device at which it will update the data with the subdevices. Here we keep the default cycle time of 8 milliseconds. To set up the subdevices, we go to the Nodes tab and click the Scan button to scan for connected subdevices. After scanning, we can see the two subdevices found and the I.O. size they have. We take both nodes as chosen and confirm with the Select button. Here we find the two selected subdevices in the list on the left side and can see the PDO mapping to the right. If your subdevice requires the download of PDO or Sync Manager assignment, you can enable that here. You can also enable the download of the PDO configuration at startup if the subdevice requires that. In the I.O. configuration tab, you can see the overall I.O. size we end up with after the scan. Let's proceed and apply the configuration. If we go back to the Home tab, we can see that the main device is in idle mode. This is because the other network has not yet come online. So, let's simulate an Ethernet IP connection. 50 bytes output and 30 bytes input on the Ethernet IP side. Now that the Ethernet IP side is online, we can see that the main device changed from idle state to active state, and the two subdevices become green, indicating that we are exchanging data with them. Let's take a look at the I.O. data using the I.O. data monitor in the Diagnostics tab. Click the Start button to monitor the data. Here we see the data that we are simulating on respective subdevice. If you would like to have more control, we can use the Data Exchange control. To make any changes to the configuration, we must first stop the current Ethernet IP connection. This is a safety measure to avoid causing disruptions of a running setup. Head back to the I.O. Configuration tab. Let's enable the Data Exchange Control. This allows you to control when the main device shall exchange data with the subdevices. While here, let's also enable the Live List that allows the other network to see which nodes that are active and exchanging data. You may control up to 32 subdevices and see the status of the same. We need to increase the output and input size with four extra bytes respectively to accommodate the data exchange control and live list on the other network. Now that the other network is online with data exchange control enabled, you can see that the main device remains in idle mode. 
The data exchange control is binary. To start data exchange with the first sub-device, we send a binary one in the first byte of the data exchange control. The main device changes status from idle to active, and the first sub-device becomes green, indicating that we are exchanging data with it. You can see that the live list reflects this with a binary one. By sending a binary 2 instead, we tell the main device to exchange data with the second sub-device. The main device status remain in active state as we exchange data with at least one sub-device. To control both sub-devices, we send a value of 3, the first two bits, In the I.O. data monitor, we can now see the increased I.O. size of the extra four bytes that make up the data exchange control and live list. In the left column, we can see the data exchange control with a value of 3, binary node 1 and 2, in the first four bytes. To the right, we see the live list in the first four bytes followed by the input data from the subdevices. PDOs with index 0 are not supported. You can remove them by deleting them from the Nodes tab. Select the node in question and use the garbage can icon next to each PDO to delete it.